All right, Juan, let's uh let's jump into it, man. Um, the news, man, when Pettis and uh Gallagher they were pulled from the Grand Prix. What were your what was your initial thoughts and reaction to to that news? Uh, because I wasn't fighting either either of them, it didn't matter to me. I mean, I didn't. It, it doesn't matter who's in this tournament for me. Well, it it affected you pretty good, right? Because yeah, they slide you into this. Uh... <laughs> Sergio's loss is definitely my gain, right? Like, uh, unfortunately, yeah. he got hurt, and I wished him well, and you know, sent my you know uh, regards to him, and hoping that he gets well soon so he can come back. But again, the sport is uh, you see it time and time again. So I'm ready to step in. I've been ready. So you know, for me, it's very fortunate. Yeah, definitely fortunate. And uh, yeah, you're right. It's a lot of it's about just opportunity and timing right for for all of this yeah definitely for everyone i mean i was very fortunate to be in this position that i am and then now that uh me and rufion i mean we're definitely considered a title fight right like this this matchup between us is definitely uh worthy of a title fight and that's what makes it more um exciting for me to get up every morning i mean i'm already excited that i'm fighting them because he's a great athlete and a great fighter but now to add the title on there it just makes it that much sweeter. Oh, of course, man. You 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 come from a title fight into a title fight. You know what I mean? Like it's nothing better than that. Um, when when they did pull him, was the interim title something that was in your mind to to salvage the Grand Prix? Because would you could you see a Grand Prix without a title? Um, it's always definitely sweeter when the title's involved. But I mean. To me, I was just focused on getting back into the ring. Like, I, it didn't matter. I just need to get active and prove to myself that I'm capable of worthy performances for people to watch time and time again. Um, yeah, this fight coming up, you know, it played out well for you. Like I said earlier, you got the interim title on the line. You're taking on Stotts. He's undefeated in Bellator. Just give me your overall thoughts on him and, and what he brings to the table. Yeah, he's definitely a great uh, mixed martial artist. He definitely utilizes wrestling, stand-up, Muay Thai, Jiu-Jitsu. I mean, uh, he's fast. He's young. I, I, I guess he's not that young. But, uh, I mean, he definitely brings a good mentality into a fight where it's full of energy. And, like, uh, this fight's going to be fun. You know, this fight's going to be fun for me to prove to myself that I could get a guy like this that's full of um, confidence in himself and full of confidence in what he does and take that away from him. You know, uh, I've done it time and time again with other opponents and I'm here to prove it uh, come fight night. I want to know what that feeling is like to go in there against another man who feels 100% confident in themselves, in their skill set, and then you go in there and halt all of that. You just stop all of that. It's almost like a transfer of energy, right? Like I know the old samurai felt like when you had taken a great a greater warrior's life like that transfer that transfer of energy is what made them the best like that mm -hmm. continue to strive them to go seek the best warriors in the world and 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 see what you have against them because the transfer of energy is real like when i fought patchy like i just felt him just fully deplete and then all his energy taking all his energy and taking it on to the next fight although i lost my my next fight but, you know, I just feel like I got that much better into that next fight. And now losing uh, as well, it depends how you go about it. Like, okay, this, you know, I got to go back and do the road work to get back how, how I got back on top. And that's what I'm doing right now. And so to be able to go in there and fight a guy full of energy and full of that and be able to dethrone him or knock him off his horse and then uh, take his energy, it's definitely a, a an awesome feeling. Uh, the loss against Pettis. Um, when you look back at that fight, what do you what do you feel like went wrong? What wasn't clicking for you that night? Do you feel? Oh well, uh, he he neutralized a lot of my weapons, which was a broken mm -hmm. foot and a broken right hand and a broken mm -hmm. right foot. You know, so he did the smart thing of taking my weapons away by being technically sound and uh, defensively strong. And uh, that's just you know it was in the beginning of the fight, so I was you know navigating through that. Oh yeah, definitely. That's uh. You know, when we see fighters go through that, right, and win, you know, we don't really say much. But when you go through that and, and not get the, the decision, there's not much talked about that. Do you feel like that, that people don't talk about it enough? Yeah. I mean, you know, I, again, like, I don't know how I lost that fight. I mean, I showed, uh, I mean, the judging on on mixed martial arts and MMA is crazy, like, you reward a guy that sits back and just defends the whole time, right? And not really showing too much mixed martial arts 
And so you're you're granting a guy permission to win when he's not really showing any mixed martial arts. And, the, you know, I felt like I showed more mixed martial arts in that fight, got more takedowns, pushed the pace more. And, you know, I, I landed a lot more shots than I thought they said I landed. And, you know, because I'm in there, I'm feeling these hands, you know, my hands getting busted up and I'm feeling them land. And, you know, I don't think um, it's just it, it's just hard, you know, because. Mm -hmm. Me judging personally, when I judge a fight, like, like for instance, Aljamain and Peter Yawn, like Aljamain, a lot of people are saying Aljamain lost, but I feel like he won because he did, he was the better mixed martial artist. When you're able to show, you know, if, if you're judging a stand-up fight or a, a, a kickboxing fight, then go do, then go, go judge, uh, you know, Muay Thai or go judge boxing or go do wrestling or jujitsu, like, you got to be able to judge a well-rounded fight of a mixed martial arts fight. And that's what we're fighting for. So I don't understand how judging is being scored and it's, it's kind of crazy, right? I mean, for yeah. all aspects, I think a lot of the fighters feel the same way. Oh, and another problem with judging is that the, this place has these judging style and these rules over here. And it's like, I don't, it's confusing to me, yeah. like where and what kind of rules that they're using. Yeah, and it's definitely not their fault. Like, I'm not blaming the judges because they go by a criteria. I'm just, we're all trying to understand the criteria of what they're going by. And um, they have the hardest job in the world, definitely, because their fans, just like us, they're watching a fight and it's their opinion, right? Like, uh, everyone's opinion, uh, like, that's where you have three refs. But that's where life scoring comes into play, where you're, if you're doing life scoring, then we're understanding, like, okay, like I lost that round. Like I could go into this next round knowing I need to do more. Or I did too much. And now I need to sit back and be more defensive like this guy's doing. Like if I would have known the scorecards going in that uh, Pettis fight, like I would have been able to do a lot more or a lot less and say, okay, they're scoring defensively. Like let me be defensive. Or like, oh, okay, like, uh, you know, they, they just want a stand-up fight or they just want to judge a stand-up fight and not show any wrestling attempts or no takedown attempts. Like, I don't know, just... I it we need life scoring if we don't have a criteria on judging. Uh, I completely agree. I would love to see uh, see some live uh, scoring, man. It, yeah. it would give more accountability to the judges because they're sitting cage side, and then when the scores go up, the fans are going to react in the arena. Well, I don't think it'll be accountability. I think the uh, that the fans will understand what's being scored at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I mean, they're already held accountable as much as they can be, right? And uh, I, I just think it's just their interpretation of what how they're judging this fight. And so you can make those adjustments in real time when their life scores. Now, going back to you, almost a year between fights, man, that's a lot of time to improve, to transform. Was there anything, you know, you focused on in the last year that has given you great results? Um, you know, I just focused on uh, with my uh, strength and conditioning coach, uh, Sam Calavita at the training lab. We spent a lot of time just rebuilding my body for one um and because we were told this tournament was going to happen and that's why i got held off and then with my coaches paul herrera and tiki uh Gosen, who's also my manager uh they just really got to fine tune with me and work things that i hadn't been able to slow down and work on you know we were asking for fight asking for fight we just got kept getting pulled off but uh i was very fortunate to have these guys in my corner and continue to work with them and get better i, I feel like i'm the best i've ever uh, been in my life so I'm a, I'm excited to prove that from fight night. You, oh, so you kind of feel that the the delay, right? The re, the delay, your return to the cage, it has actually really helped you a lot entering this Grand Prix. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, going in, it depends how you look at it, right? Like some people are like, oh, ring rest and things like that. But I train with the best guys in the world. Brian Ortega, TJ Dillashaw, Cub Swanson, Georgie Karakanian, Aaron Pico. Uh, been wrestling with some of the best wrestlers in the world from and bravo young yanni dicka hollis and uh the penn state the whole penn state squad and then over here at esperanza high school we have a lot of up-and-coming guys that are um being ready to transfer into uh to ncaa and wrestle so i've just been improving and and just staying in the gym every day i mean that's what i love to do anyway training with high school kids man it must i don't know if it's a reality check for them or is it like just more beneficial for you I think it's a two. It's it's a definitely beneficial for both sides, right? Mm -hmm. Like 
they see a guy that's coming in working hard and being still being coachable and still being able to move around and wrestle and uh, practicing what they preach and then having to, um, you know, keep up with me or me keep up with them during their season is, uh, you know, it's motivation on both parts. Now, with Stotts, you know, his last two victories were against Josh Hill and Magomed Magomedov, probably his toughest competition so far in his career. How has he looked in your eyes in his last two fights? Did, did he look like a, a championship caliber fighter? Yeah, definitely. I mean, to fight a guy like Magomedov and uh, be able to dominate him like he did, I mean, that guy's beaten Peter Yawn and, you know, Josh Hill. I mean, he he's had some good fights and uh, has an impressive winning streak as well. So, you know, a lot of these guys are dangerous, you know, uh, in, in this Grand Prix. And no one's uh, – once you start taking it lightly or drinking your own Kool-Aid, you're going to be falling behind very fast. How do you feel uh, mentally, you know, entering this title fight? Oh, I feel great. Yeah, I mean, I'm – I'm by far ready to fight for sure. I mean, I love fighting. I fought in seven times in one year and not being able to fight is really frustrating um, because I'm in the gym all the time. Like I, I, I signed to try to fight five times a year. That was on my contract. But unfortunately with the COVID situation and things getting slowed down, uh, we weren't able to, to accomplish that or, you know, meet those agreements. And so hopefully with, you know, this Grand Prix happening, I'm guaranteed three fights within this year. So, you know, hopefully the following years, I'm able to take the legendary fights that I want, like the guys like Borix and AJ McKee, the Pitbull brothers, you know, the the uh, Benson Henderson guys, and, you know, just keep traveling through weight classes and taking those legendary fights that cement my name and history and uh, performances that people want to watch over and over again. Yeah, it's just uh, incredible, like... Uh... The, like what you have gone through yourself, you know, I feel like you're up there pound for pound for Bellator as well. You know, people talk about Patricia Pitbull doing that, you know, but you've been doing it too, going back and forth in weight classes. I, me personally, I like the fighters that challenge themselves in different weight classes. You know what I mean? I feel like that is a guy that, is, you know, worrying about your record is important, but I feel like that's a fighter, you know, a fighter that would yeah. challenge themselves against guys that, you know, some you you go in as an underdog most of the time yeah definitely i mean because in reality like yeah it's good to dominate a, a division but that kind of gets old right like we're tired of seeing the Usman fight the like he's about to lap the division go back and fight all these guys again it's like dude why don't you just go up and fight it's like, oh israel we're from the same country blah 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 and it's like dude you're not like khabib like you didn't challenge yourself you didn't go up a division and and fight these guys like how like that's challenging like that's that's putting things on the line or you didn't drop the weight uh, like me i'm able to drop to 35 45 or 55 it doesn't matter like i want to challenge myself and put myself uh against the best in that division and that's why i fought pitbull the first round i was like hey he's the best i want to see what i have and you know fortunately it didn't work in my favor but we won five rounds and you know aj ended up beating him and uh proving his worth and showing that he's the best in the world at 145 yeah i love it man i love it i love the the, the challenges that that fighters take on it's incredible sometimes um with this fight coming up man how do you see yourself winning this title man another one yeah i mean i definitely got to stick to my game plan right i mean not fight emotional and just go through and just see a blank piece of canvas and go out there and paint the, a masterpiece which i plan on doing and on the other side of the bracket you know you got horiguchi and mix you know you already fought and beat mix what do you see in that matchup who do you feel like is going to come out on top Man, he's such a good grappler, but the only problem is uh, I don't think he, his grappling and his stand-up is as fast as Horiguchi. If he could slow him down, he definitely could be Horiguchi, but Horiguchi is just so fast and dynamic, and he's quick, and he knows how to grapple fast and dynamic. He knows how to get in those scrambles and come out on top. So, you know, it just depends whose who's night is going to be able to uh, dictate their um, their game plan. Would, would a, a finals against... Horiguchi be something that you would you know prefer since to get there yeah i mean yeah. i'm definitely not overlooking stocks at all because oh, uh a lot of these guys have you know and, and that's why they ended up on the wrong side of the decision mm -hmm. and so for me my i've been telling my family and everything i said listen like i don't care who like goes to my fight i don't care what i'm on like i'm here to do one job and one job only right now i'm not looking ahead i'm here to try to do the best i can to win this fight 
will you be watching all the fights in the Grand Prix or are you just going to be watching the ones that you feel like will be important for you to move on? Again, man, I mean, this this fight is so important to me that I got to win this fight. And so that's the only thing that matters right now when I go to, when I leave my house. I mean, honestly, doing interviews and things like that, I didn't even want to do because I'm just working so much in the dark that I have focused all my energy on on winning this fight. All right. One last question, man. Sure, man. Since, uh, your close teammate, T. Dillashaw, man, he'll most likely be fighting for uh, the Bantamweight title soon. Dillashaw versus Sterling. How do you see that one? Oh, TJ, 100%. I mean, this is this will be probably TJ's easiest um, um, title fight by far, mm-hmm. you know, and, and him uh, showing up fight night and it's going to prove it from that night. All right, man. Well, you got your own title fight, man. April 23rd, Bellator 279, first round of the, the Bantamweight Grand Prix. Juan, appreciate the time, man. All the best in the fight. All right, thank you.